start our session okay quickly uh, so first of all uh, as we always say we are not professional uh, if we make any mistakes please forgive us and this kind of technical issues <laughs> it will always be here and we will uh, try to solve whenever we face this kind of issues um, we wanted to thank uh, dr drogo mistra for accepting our invitation uh, for discussion about smb uh, he has a lot of experience i'll give a, a brief background uh, but i will suggest you uh, 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 to uh, check his linkedin profile for more info uh, mr mr finished phd in 2006 uh, he did his postdoc uh, from texas a and m university he was scientist and uh, manager at Houston Methodist, uh, instructor in cancer researcher at Cornell University, director of R&D in uh, Sage Media Corp, director of biology at uh, Cryptos Biologies, and consultant at Oncometrics Biotech. Uh, today, we will fully focus on uh, in-depth discussion about ASCP SMB. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, I just are uh, gonna start with some statistics and SMB. Uh, so if you see here, uh, there has like, this is uh, from 2018, uh, only 2% got SMB certification. Uh, in 2019, only 7% got, so total 9. In uh, uh, 20, uh, total uh, uh, only I think 6% got, so it's total um, 15. And uh, uh, till 2021, it's uh, 19 people. So if you see all the four years uh, number, uh, you can see here, uh, and uh, we also discussed in our uh, previous pod also. Uh, so uh, I think we already got uh, the answer for 69 persons like that uh, they totally got. Uh, but uh, we want to hear about, uh, 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 we, we can just uh, like uh, at the beginning, uh, we can just uh, hear uh, Dr. Mishra's uh, experience. Uh, I think uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, he is recently uh, um, got the SMB. So uh, can you please uh, share your experience and uh, share your, um, uh, uh, like how you feel, felt when you saw this kind of statistics? Right, okay. So uh, this is pretty interesting and uh... I want to really share about this aesthetics I, uh, I wanted, but uh, it's good that you bring that and you share the uh, snapshots. And uh, uh, I would say I looked at this aesthetics after I passed my exam. Before passing my exam, actually, I never get a chance to look at these aesthetics because these aesthetics suggest they, they are really like, uh, if you look at the passing rate, I mean, even though it's been four years, and uh, with this slide, I believe it's a, it's like right now, total probably only uh, for SMB, uh, total only 19 people since, uh, till like, uh, uh, till, uh, 18th of January of 2022, there were only probably 19 people only who who are having this uh, SMB certification, if I'm not wrong, based on what I actually analyzed these, uh, these data, which is like uh, the passing rate is really like very low, less than 10% as compared to any other certification exam from ASCP, which is having on average passing rate is more than 70%, right? So- Yes, that's so, correct. That's so, correct. so it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> I looked at this aesthetics uh, after I passed, otherwise I could have, because <laughs> I also <laughs> failed once. So it's not like uh, I passed in like first attempt. So uh -huh. I was failed and it was like shocking to me um uh, because uh, i thought uh, i was doing everything um um like um, i i studied and probably i was having the right choices there but uh, at the final screen that says fail and it was so disappointing in the early but anyway i didn't uh, but yeah 
to me, it looks uh, it's not 69 people got approval. Uh, uh, okay, it may be 69 people got approval to take the exam. Probably. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes but, sense. Yeah, uh, but uh, and that's also 69 people got approval not in four years. Uh, it's just like in 2021. Okay, okay, okay. Got so that. if you look at if you look the data carefully, so it's like 69 people took uh, took the exam of SMB in 2021, and okay. out of that, only four people passed. Passed. So it was like six percent, and yeah. uh, till 2021, uh, it's like January 2021, 18th of January when it was released, only. 19 people were passed with SMB exam. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, like your discussions with these uh, statistics. It makes sense. And as you suggested, uh, you are correct. Like for you, like you saw these uh, statistics after your exam. I think it was very much helpful. Um, but for us, like we are preparing and after seeing these statistics, uh, I can assure you like a lot of us, we are really scared and we are right now uh, thinking to take more time to prepare more uh, before like going to the to uh, to take the exams right right i mean <laughs> yeah. if i would have seen this aesthetic before passing my exam i probably i would have uh, uh, stopped like my second attempt and i should have like uh, you're right i mean it, it just is very scary yeah. And probably I might I might have got demotivated. I should have I probably I have thought like okay I shouldn't give this exam. It's uh, <laughs> it may not be uh, my cup of tea. But anyway, um, but but it, 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 all this is I actually I think it's uh, it's require really deep understanding and uh, learning the things i mean basics everybody knows like you know we are all in the molecular field we did masters and we did phd and mm -hmm. many people might be having a lot of experience uh, uh, technically and like scientifically but um, the most critical part in taking this exam i mean to preparing for this smb is like a, a deep understanding of fundamentals of uh, of like biomolecules rna dna proteins and how uh, actually how to utilize those properties in designing the molecular methods and using them for the clinical application and then having the critical control setup or like uh, as per the regulatory uh, guidelines. So I think it it it's having all these things, but uh, uh, basics they they are very low. But anyway, yeah, go ahead and let's yeah, talk, then we can. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, so uh, just to uh, go in depth of the the calculation. So uh, you are correct. Like um, uh, it's not um, uh, it it is usual with SMP that uh, people uh, in the past attempts are. Uh, um, they are not succeed with this thing, and uh, I know some people personally. They, they are taking third uh, times or fourth times because they are saying it's very difficult, and the statistics also so showed that. So uh, uh, to just uh, uh, get uh, get an idea uh, about, so some uh, people uh, already suggested, uh, uh, like shared with us that. Um, um, like they were supposed they got some of the percentage, like according to the guide and the syllabus of uh, SMB. Uh, like they got like uh, from molecular science, they got 100 score, uh, molecular techniques 296, laboratory operation 236, application of molecular testing to 217. So uh, like her question was like, uh, how they calculate? Uh, is it kind of same as MB, which is molecular biology? Uh, like uh, we take molecular biology uh, and uh, um, people said it seems uh, uh, easier and also its passing rate is also higher much higher than SMB. Right. And uh, do they calculate the score based on sections, uh, meaning every sections? Uh, and what is the minimum score one should get from each sections to get the 400? That is the passing score that uh, you just uh, discussed. And 
regarding MB, IMB, SMB, ISMB, uh, it is kind of like the same way calculations. So I, I'm sorry, it's like four questions we kept uh, together just to give an idea about how ACP normally may be calculated or something, or just we, we should forget about calculation and we should focus on learning, learning the theory and also the applications. So I can just, uh, so here is the thing, I never gave the exam of MB, so I'm not uh, uh, sure about how they calculate it, but here the calculation definitely uh, for the SMB, they are for the different section. And if each, so here is the, you need to have more than 400 marks in each of these four category. That is for sure. Okay, got it. Okay, the first thing, mm -hmm. each category must score more than 400. So there is possibility that in molecular science, you may score 600, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe in molecular technique, you may score 450. Mm -hmm. But if you lose in laboratory, less than 400 in laboratory operation or applications of molecular testing, Hmm. you won't get uh, passed. So this is one, this is one part. Another part is if, because you know, th these questions are not like, uh, they are, these questions pop up based on the, how you performing, how you are answering each question, right? So they are like, uh, uh, they are like, uh, oh, I forgot the name, I mean, uh, it's a it's a different type of question. So difficulty level increases if you if you if you answer right, the next question will be little difficult to your previous question. If you answer again right, next question will be again difficult. And when it's difficult, it will be having more marks also. Got right? that. Yes. So, so so if you are doing if you if your answers are wrong probably you will be uh, taking round and round within the molecular science, right? Mm -hmm. You will be probably attempting a lot of questions of molecular science. You're not moving to molecular techniques or laboratory operations, which are having higher weightage. Mm. That sounds interesting. Uh, so uh, I, I think you, we are discussing about the computer adaptive testing, which is uh, yeah, cat cat is, is, are, is uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I think uh, those who has experience with GRE graduate record examinations uh, for higher education or the I think uh, uh, after uh, undergrad um, USA undergrads, they normally take uh, this kind of uh, CAT exam. Uh, for uh, higher education. So uh, these kind of exams also has this kind of like, if people can answer the questions according to that, next question will be a little bit difficult. And the weight of that uh, point uh, uh, for that questions uh, will be higher. Uh, I think uh, this is kind of interesting about this, this uh, exam. And the thing that you just said, it's kind of like a new information for us that uh, suppose if somebody is doing a uh, very bad in molecular science, meaning uh, he cannot just move to molecular techniques because he cannot just answer the the molecular science questions, which is uh, five to ten percent questions. Yeah. So, so the, uh, the they will carry very they will carry probably the least number for each. So each question is having a different. Uh, uh, they provide different score. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you like uh, if you have a right answer to a difficult question, you may get five numbers right away mm -hmm. right? as compared that. to the molecular science which is you do four questions four answers then you get the like uh, four yeah. numbers four right? points or something like yeah. that oh something, because it's uh, yeah so this is how i i believe i mean i realize this is how it works yes uh, it makes sense it's a logical explanation also as uh, whoever we have experience regarding like uh, because uh, for phd we needed to take the gre and uh, it's it's it works the similar way, kind of like that. Yeah, you are correct. So that's kind of interesting information we uh, uh, got. Um, our next question is like one of our member. Uh, 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 I think Dr. Muit, uh, he gonna take the exams uh, next week. So what will be your advice to a person who has exam within one week? Okay. So here I would say, it's a uh, so so if you if you have seen the syllabus. 
and if you've seen the uh, uh, different like categories of this, so I I have the same book. You know, it's a uh, from the third edition, Leela Buckingham. Buckingham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, molecular diagnostic, and this is the book that actually I read. So, um, so I would say when you have one week, uh, you have to focus on actually two sections, which is like, uh, and more like like uh, techniques in the clinical clinical laboratory part. Clinical laboratory part. Okay, that is the. Yes, so that, that's that good one. Okay, so this one you need to focus more on the application of molecular testing. So if you have read this, you probably have seen it's having like uh, basically three major chapters. One is for the inheritance, one is for the oncology, and one is for the transplant. Like the HLA. Uh yeah, so yes. for transplant, like uh, transplant, how yeah. they, uh, transplant. testings yeah. are different kind of testings are done, and what is the basis of each of these, and mm -hmm. high resolution uh, versus like low resolution, all those uh, um, thing typing. So it, it's very important to at least these three parts from this uh, from the application of molecular testing. You should cover. You should have a like overview. So uh, what I did actually, I. I prepare handmade uh, notes. Mm -hmm. Got that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. in two page, like two mm -hmm. or maximum three page. The summary, summary of the summary. Like all yeah. the all the important yeah. information from yeah. that chapter. So all the important points. So just maximum two three. So that that summary, like uh, you can have like those terms or like mm. uh, in molecular oncology, you get a like table where you can see all the mutations and related to the um, uh, related to different diseases, mm. right? You, you should be able to distinguish between leukemia, lymphomas, and uh, all these uh, different uh, uh, kind of like uh, re translocation structural changes, how they differ and how to basically detect these and what is the basis of that, okay? Mm -hmm. And some, uh, at least, it's it showed they ask at least two three mutations and you need to just figure out which cancer it belongs to. Mm. Okay. Got that. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think I uh, what I found it's more on the hematological side. They ask the question most of this, mm. and they are they are little like tricky to keep like uh, to learn or like to keep it like uh, in the memory. So it's better to prepare a note mm -hmm. and prepare the note or the table by yourself. I mean, you will find the table over there too mm -hmm. in the in the book itself. Book. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. but uh, if you start like uh, reading that table, probably you you will uh, you won't get the point or you won't memorize it like in a structural way. Right, you want to do yeah. it in such a way so that you can remember there has to be clues or there has to be certain logic, how things. So when you will read and you will write your notes, you will understand. You will be able to figure out uh, a pattern, and you will be able to understand and memorize those uh, kind of uh, uh, information. Yeah, mutations and how yeah. they are get detected. I just want to I just want to ask uh, you. So this ACB SMB is as I know MB is direct more questions, you know, direct hit question. But uh, as I know ACP SMB they will ask about more on scenario based. Uh, right. Real real uh, scenario. And and uh, it will be easy question but they'll be ask, you know, lengthy question but with more of scenarios like patient comes to your clinic or patient to come to your lab with these results. Something like they're that. More like practical right. basis. Yeah, they're, they're case studies kind of questions. So yes, that's right. why it's very important to understand the logic, to understand like the region behind or like um, what mutations and how it will be detected, why we are using that kind of uh, detection method. Or like what about what about what about uh, lab operations and this uh, uh, setting up the lab or admin administrative point of view any 
uh, lab operations that is all uh, guidelines uh, plus uh, laboratory administration so this is another uh, part actually which i am um, because i um, I, yeah. I i work in a managerial role so mm -hmm. i got some like ideas like how to do budgeting or uh, like how to do some calculation and all this mm -hmm. but uh, you're right i mean these questions uh, i didn't find any specific book i mean that that, that is the worst part like for the laboratory administration like how to um, uh, do the budgeting like the, they say like you have uh, or you have this particular instrument you bought and it's having this value and over the years uh, how much mm -hmm. it, it's something like some this simple calculation but again i realized like uh, it's a very logical you need to it's not like too much calculation but probably you need to break it down mm -hmm. uh, the question and do that kind of uh, calculation. So like a PTO calculation or mm -hmm. uh, P, uh, like um, uh, hours, number of hours or those kind of calculations. So it's like it comes more uh, from the like experience. And I'm also not uh, that much experienced, but um, I try to, uh, for the quality control, I actually try to find some YouTube videos to understand like a statistical chart and uh, how to uh, monitor like plus minus to standard deviation and all those LJ chart and everything. So that you can find on the YouTube, but budget and capital equipment acquisition related and cost analysis. It's really, um, I mean, I just use the logical sequences of my understanding based on the question, but I really, I didn't find a clear book which can, or like any website where I can find these uh, details. Got that, got that. I think, um, uh, thank you so much Dr. Mohit for uh, 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 bringing this up. I think, I think we, uh, you uh, answered <laughs> most of my, uh, the rest of the questions, I think, <laughs> uh, I think it was very nice discussions. And I think Dr. Misha is very humble. Uh, he said he does not have uh, much experience, but if you see his, uh, he, if you know more, more of his uh, profile, uh, I think uh, we 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 should be more scared of that. We we can take like two times or three times fail. I think <laughs> based on based on if we compared our experience with uh, Dr. Misha. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, uh, sir. Uh, so we will uh, uh, go into our uh, next step. I think you already um, uh, touched uh, a lot of stuff uh, from um, uh, in your last discussions. Uh, so uh, our next question was like, what were the study materials you watched, uh, you used for SMB? As you said, you used the uh, Kingham molecular diagnostic fundamental methods and uh, clinical applications for I I did I took the uh, molecular biology test so uh, we also use the same uh, but as we know uh, that was kind of like basic uh, questions we got from there but I, as you said SMB is much more uh, a much more real life related uh, questions they wanted to uh, like ask us so that they can know okay how much we can. Uh, uh, figure out the realistic problems or solve the realistic problems. So, uh, in the, uh, we just take that from the website. I think everyone knows uh, this uh, syllabus or textbook list that is like for molecular biology. They suggested this kind of books and uh, application of molecular biology. They suggested these books and for management. Uh, it, some of the people suggested harmonizing a laboratory management principle and process. Uh, these books they suggested. Uh, and for mathematics, uh, this kind of books. But um, uh, here, some of our um, uh, participants, they are uh, already some of them PhD holders, some of are working uh, for a long time. I think uh, regarding this, we are uh, maybe good. We think we are confident, but still, according to you, uh, what uh, books uh, do you recommend for us to, to check every day or to read every day? So uh, actually, I didn't um, read any of these books that mentioned here. Mm -hmm. I didn't have. 
So uh, maybe you may find like the Abdul was asking some questions uh, mm -hmm. related to the laboratory administration, and that might you find uh, some answers. Uh, I believe in the in these uh, uh, in these books, but uh, here I would uh, strongly suggest because. That is one part like uh, laboratory management and um, uh, and administration. Few questions there, but uh, uh, because it's uh, it's all exam is about like clinical lab, and they are regulatory control, right? So there is like a CMS which controls which actually the administrative body, and CLIA and CAP and NCCN and there are many other like. Uh, uh, bodies, I mean, which provide the guidelines and have uh, these regulatory guidelines too. So, what I what I did um, because so this book, and then beside that, I actually went to CDC website where I looked at the uh, like uh, regarding many of these. So, like uh, they said, like. Um, uh, some of the tests you can read, but it's still like understanding the clinical application and you may not find actually uh, in this book. So it's better to walk through the CDC website and CDC website is also having some quiz based challenges. It's connected to some of the quiz based challenges, which also help in the laboratory administration like case studies. So I would say go to the CDC website and you will find there some modules okay and just uh, i mean uh, study i mean you do uh, study those modules and do some like they are like real case scenarios and they matches to how the questions come so you will find a better understanding so go to cdc website fda website and most importantly cms website so CMS okay. websites also provide a lot of information. So I collected many of these information from these CDC, FDA, and uh, CMS website. Some questions also come from NCCN. Uh, it's a body which recommends the treatment therapeutic modules, and they actually ask some questions from there. So you need to probably visit the NCCN website also. Cool. And most recently, I mean, the one that I gave, I mean, I found a lot of questions uh, related to the NGS also. So it, one needs to like very thoroughly understand uh, this NGS uh, 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 related question. And for that, I think um, it's better to go to um, CDC website and also it's called one more website is called AMP. It's uh, I think Association for Molecular Pathologists, and there you find uh, good details. Also, also I can add uh, ACMG website. Yeah, got that. ACMG. Yes, I think uh, all the info. This is new to me because I I think I. Uh, 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 this is very important if we think logically like CTC, FDA, these are the governing bodies. They make the rules and regulations. They change the rules and regulations according to the situation. So I think uh, to get the latest uh, knowledge or uh, 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 latest uh, information uh, from this kind of website and all the regulatory bodies that Dr. Mishra mentioned, I think it is it will be very much helpful. I think. Um, we, I, I kept the note. I think this is very much important information for us. Um, and, uh, uh, um, we can move. I on. have actually have, I have a question to Dr. Uh, Mishra. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, Mishra, this is Dr. Farooq. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm working as a, a clinical lab manager, like molecular lab manager. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, so I actually applied for the SMG exam. Um, so if I, I mean, um, thing is I have no experience on NGS. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, if I, if I, um, kind of want to take the exam, um, going through, um, some of the books here that Sidney, uh, uh, mentioned 
and the websites that you have mentioned and um, for you know administrative works. Where to um, find the information? Uh, no, not where to. If I go through all of these, and uh, and my experience on on you know PCR, RT PCR, and without uh, actually working in the NVS lab, um, can I pass this exam? Is that is it possible? If I you know. Yeah. I think it's a possible. There are some, I mean, they are basic questions. So I think uh, one can pass. I mean, that's not a. Uh, I, 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 I'm so sorry. I did not uh, give the background to our participants. You. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so it was uh, Dr. Farooq. He uh, got his PhD from St. John's University and he is working as uh, he said, lab manager. And also he did a lot of like validations regarding uh, polymerase chain reactions. So I think what uh, Dr. Farooq asked is like uh, a lot of people suggested like to get the real life NGS experience and uh, um, a, in some of the place maybe um, uh, getting that experience is little bit difficult. So uh, can we do that? Like can we uh, read the research articles about Illumina uh, or the ion torrent or the pack bio iso sequencing, or, or we can uh, we can get the knowledge theoretical knowledge or learn from this kind of books or the research articles. Uh, will it gonna be help, or will you suggest to get the real life experience, meaning just to do the all the NGS uh, next generation sequencing? Yeah. No, I, I won't say like you need real time real time experience for NGS. It's yeah. perfectly fine, but you you just need to get the basics of NGS. I mean, they are not like that uh, difficult that they ask the question that asked over there. They are related to quality and some basic. And that uh, you, uh, I mean, um, I know, I mean, this uh, book molecular diagnostic is also having some uh, like uh, uh, two page uh, NGS uh, information, though I would say that's not enough, mm -hmm. but it's better. I mean, you, you need to look, find a place where you can just see like five page, six page information on the NGS, but that has to be the basic. You do not need to know about iron torrent, illumina and all those things. No, you, th that's not required. But you just need to know the basic, the fundamentals, like, um, uh, uh, like uh, how these, uh, uh, what kind of uh, these ATGC, I, I mean, uh, what kind of uh, uh, kind of variables these are, and uh, what is the quality scores or FRED score, and uh, like uh, you need to look at some of these uh, uh, diagnostic tests which are approved. Like what is the coverage? I mean, what is the minimum coverage when it's somatic or when it's uh, um, uh, when the sensitivity when the number of like uh, let's say you are looking for a mutation which frequency is very low so that's why you need to have like certain coverage like 1000 x or something like that so that you should be able to pick that mutation right so mm -hmm. these are the like some kind of basics uh, uh, understanding so you need like a basic understanding and um, i won't say like you don't need any kind of like ngs real time real experience um, that that's not required uh, you just it. need to know the basics and you can find and uh, you find some like you can find even from the good information like i said like amp website or like cms <laughs> website actually <laughs> that's also provided so i actually got all this information from these places so you can easily find all those information there that is yeah, so i have another um question so um um, so I, I, I guess you have a lot of experience. I mean, uh, you had a lot of experience before you took the SMB exam. And, uh, so you, uh, when you, um, so took the, uh, for the first time and you, uh, failed, unfortunately, uh, which section you, you found, um, kind of disturbing that actually, uh, kind so, of, yeah, so. The, the least marks I got was in laboratory administration. Administration. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here, laboratory operation. Mm -hmm. so that, that was the least, and maximum was in the molecular science. Got so, that. Uh, 
powerful. It was more than 600 in the molecular sign. Mm. That, that makes no sense. And Dr. Uh, laboratory you, operation was give, the least. Yeah. Uh, they will give the each section marks when you pass. Yeah, they, you they give you each section mark. Yes. When you pass, when you fail. Okay. Yeah, I think it's similar for uh, molecular biology also. For molecular biology, if somebody uh, uh, fails, they mentioned uh, they give all the each sector. So they just said, okay, which sectors you are doing uh, poorly, please uh, work on that. So that next exam you can do better. I think that is the explanation ACP uh, gave uh, normally to people. But when people passed, uh, then normally they don't normally say, okay, which sector, uh, what you got? As Dr. Mishra yeah, said, then like, they don't, don't give like each uh, area, uh, each content area mark. Yeah, Once percentage. Pass, then they give you like overall. Yeah, guys, guys, I I mean, though I accepted, I mean, I thought we, we decided like 15, 20 minutes or like 30 oh, minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, I, I yeah, need yeah. to leave by 4.30. Okay. Yeah. 4.30. Uh, so, not not uh, right now. So we can go for okay. an hour. <laughs> okay. Uh, like uh, how long we're going to get? Uh, we're going to go quickly. Uh, so it is 5.10 uh, to New York uh, City time. So... Uh, you are saying another 10 minutes is okay? Yeah, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, uh, we, we're going to go quickly. And uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, those so, but I mean, anytime you you can email me or you need any information, I would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Help and whatever I can do. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, and, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mishra, for your uh, feedback. Really yeah, appreciate and, it. I'm going to quickly go our next questions and all our participants, please uh, write in the chat uh, or uh, I, at the end, I will give the uh, email address or share the uh, LinkedIn and we can uh, uh, share that. It will be helpful, but uh, we're going to quickly, quickly go into our next uh, important questions. How to prepare one person to, okay, we already got that. Which mistake you would fix if you can go back to six months before your exam. Okay, I think uh, this is the also, I think you already answered. So we're going to move forward. How do you remember knowledge based info? Okay, we can pass this also. Uh, okay, according to you, okay, we got that answer. According to you, what are topics that you suggest? I think we already got the answer for this one also. Uh, you already answered a lot of questions. Uh, yeah, if you did not understand. Okay, I think this is an interesting uh, uh, topic. Uh, we can get some info from you. Uh, if you did not understand the topic, uh, what uh, you did or do or like um, normally do, for example, watching YouTube videos. I think you mentioned about that on that topic or reading blogs, uh, speaking with so, friends or colleagues. Yeah. Okay, so let me answer this. Um, so I prefer watching YouTube videos. I mean, this is very interesting. Nowadays, uh, I do find like uh, some people in the name of, I mean, not all are good. I mean, some are like really, I mean, um, really bad, but uh, mm -hmm. you need to search the YouTube video based on your exact your exactly on your topic, right? And yeah. you will find you need to. So when you watch, you need to understand like um, the basics, but like NGS, like I said, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you didn't yeah. do the NGS, but you need to understand the basics of NGS, and you will find a uh, pretty good uh, some videos on the YouTube which will help you in understanding. Not okay. exactly on the coverage part, mm -hmm. not exactly on the coverage part, but because for coverage part, you need to go to the CMS website so, and from yeah. there, from NGS and all those things, or like mm -hmm. AMP website, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, reading blocks, I don't know how much uh, reading uh, the blocks help, but uh, AMP is having some uh, some articles there, uh, mm -hmm. They have journals, Journal of Molecular Diagnostic, JMD, mm -hmm. and you can find some information. Mm -hmm. Speaking with friends or colleagues, um, if you have a specific question, probably they can answer. I mean, if someone is in the clinical setting, they're working mm -hmm. and they have first-hand experience, they probably, they can help you. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the, the thing is, is still like, I think it will be hard <laughs> to find the answer of your specific question related yeah. to SMB. But yeah. uh, watching YouTube videos and going through these websites, they really help. Helps. Okay, God. thank you so much. I think it was nice. Um, uh, I, we already got a lot of advantages, like it helps people to move forward. Uh, what do you say is the disadvantage of taking ACP SMB? Meaning like 
uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of like a mental pressure, like, okay, this is very difficult exam. Um, as you said, like um, percentage is low. Like, uh, what do you say is the disadvantage of taking ASCP SM? <laughs> well, so the disadvantage of taking ASCP SMB, I can right now, I can clearly see. So, right now, I'm a consultant, but I am also. Uh, looking for, I mean, I did this because I wanted to get more deeply in the clinical side and mm -hmm. clinical lab. And uh, uh, you won't believe, I mean, many people, right? It's been four years. Uh, I mean, that's one part, but many people don't know, they know ASCP MB, but mm -hmm. many people don't know SMB. Mm -hmm. okay? That's right. That's thing, right. Most of the websites which are having the job ads, mm -hmm. they have a pop-up menu where you can see the ASCP MB, mm. but you won't find the ASCP SMB. So you don't know yeah, what to, that's how, right. you, the, how you enter. Mention. Yeah, that's right. That's right. To just let them know, okay, this is your credential. They, they also know, does not know what is SMB. Like right. How Many people difficult don't it is. Know yeah. 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 So this uh, is another, I mean, MB. It is still like in the market, okay? People know, yeah. okay, you are MB, I mean, yeah. great, but people yeah. don't know SMB. So that yeah. is another disadvantage. You don't know having this um, SMB, I mean, if you already have MB or mm -hmm. if you can pass the MB and yeah. you want to like, uh, uh, I mean, it's for the job and all those things. Uh, I mean, that's still like, uh, it's better. I mean, SMB, I don't know how much it's going to help. Okay, got that. Yeah, I'm not sure about it. it's uh, related to job, but definitely you learn a lot while yeah, preparing yeah. for this exam, especially the regulatory and the lab administration. Got that, got that. Um, uh, after that much of hard work, when you saw pass, how were you feeling? Like if you want to add benefits of taking the SMB exam, benefits in general, like not only financial, but also everyday life work, I think you already answered, but about the feelings, about the emotions when you saw the well, pass. <laughs> it was overwhelming. It was so, uh, I can't tell you how much relieved I was. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I was failed and for me, after PhD, I mean, I was in India. I mean, yeah. I took a lot of competitive exams and passed CSR mm -hmm. and all those things. Yeah. But here, this was my first exam in United States, like something like this. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I never, uh, uh, apply, I mean, I never have GRE or TOEFL in the past. So I, I, I didn't, I really, I didn't have any experience with CAD based exams or all those mm -hmm. things. Yes. And this was the first exam that I was giving in United States. And uh, when I was failed, mm -hmm. I was, I just doubted my, I just doubted myself, like what I'm doing, what, how I could, uh, how I'm, I got failed. Mm -hmm. And I was so um, frustrated and uh, it took me time to make myself uh, ready again to uh, start for this exam and take it as a challenge. Like uh, it's how I can, how I could be failed with the exam. And then I actually, uh, so once I pass, it was really a great relief and get taking, getting the confidence <laughs> back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, a lot of our members will uh, relate to that. One of the persons I think who got a uh, few messaged me, uh, like they have like seven, eight years. I think uh, your discussions are going to motivate them and inspire them. So, um, I think uh, my next question was that the uh, failing part. I think you already uh, answered these questions. Uh, uh, I think they will understand from you. Um, um, uh, this is the last questions we're going to take. I think uh, we have another two minutes. So, uh, what changes are you expecting or how it will uh, look within five to 10 years in molecular biology lab industry? Or like any uh, advice for uh, future entrepreneurs or like connected question with which of the technology in the lab industry are you excited about? Like uh, regarding NGS or uh, is it getting lower the price of the sequencing? So, so definitely, I mean, as the sequencing technology is getting advanced, the prices are getting lower. But uh, I would say, I mean, uh, if you are thinking of like being, uh, getting into the entrepreneurship in the field of molecular diagnostic, I mm -hmm. think it will be a great help as you will understand not only the science and 
uh, other part, but uh, the practical or the application part, and most importantly, the regulatory guideline. Because mm. when it comes to patients, they are on the top. Regulatory guidelines are on the top. So mm. you will get a clear understanding and the validation and verification process. I mean, uh, you, you will understand all the basic and the importance of each of these steps. And you can plan accordingly. And definitely uh, the next era is of molecular diagnostic. Like you can see, I mean, most of these, um, uh, these NGS based uh, uh, assays are coming for the uh, from the guard and from the different companies uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Natera and Fisher and I mean um, Thermo. I mean they all are having these panel of genes for the NGS. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but but these are like complex tests, right? So mm -hmm. the validation yeah. is very important. They are mix of like different kind of variants, uh, single nucleotide variants and. Uh, uh, repeats and structural variants and all those things. So one mm -hmm. has to understand before you introduce in your lab mm -hmm. how to validate and verify all of these or if you want to develop your own uh, panel of uh, tests. Got that. I think it clears about this idea. It is very like NGS is important and validation part. I, I know I got just got experience with New York Genome Center. They said uh, they got one validation from New York State. It took them two years to get the the, the uh, permission to to do that. So I think this validation and to maintain these kind of things is very much important for this. Um, I think you already answered these questions. Uh, white advice, read paper. I think you already answered this. This. I think uh, we uh, as we already uh, in our times. So we wanna just thank you so much for giving us your valuable time and sharing your knowledge and. Uh, um, I, I'm really sorry. I took little bit of time and our participant asked the question. So, uh, uh, we did not uh, uh, intend to take much of your time, but uh, what you discussed is very much helpful for us. I think a lot of people, those who want to listen to this uh, in future will be very much uh, helpful uh, for their preparations and for their exams. And I will, uh, if you uh, give me permissions, I can uh, share this with uh, Dr. Moe or Dr. Farooq if they have or other participants, if they have any more questions, I think they can email you. Uh, so uh, that's all from my side. So thank you so much, Dr. Mishra, for uh, joining. Thank you. Here. Thank you for inviting me. And I am always, I would be happy to uh, share any information that help you and get to uh, get move forward with this uh, exam or uh, pass this. Uh, can, you, um, can you please um, share the LinkedIn profile? Dr. Yeah, Mishra. yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share uh, with each of you. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Mishra. Thank, thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Take care. Okay. Bye.